Hey guys, welcome to this video. I'm here with a guest. It's Harris again. For those of you who don't know, a quick intro to the situation right now. Me and Harris recorded a first part of this video or like a first interview of him and me together where Harris shared a lot of his successes, his manifestation journey, his insights into the law of assumption and Neville's teachings. And we asked you guys, you know, do you want to have a part two? Do you want more of that? And 90% of you said, please have a part two. Please invite Harris again. So we linked up again right now. Harris is here with me. And we want to talk about some very relevant topics to you guys and with you guys about like Neville's teachings, the law of assumption, I am shifting states. So we came up with some ideas and this conversation will be super organic. Um, before I speak much further, Harris, uh, would you say hi again to the audience? Because some of my YouTube community might don't know you yet. So do you want to say hi? Hi, guys, and hello to Niklas. Uh, thanks for having me again. I'm so excited for doing this part too. Nice. Perfect. I'm, I think we will have an amazing conversation. And again, guys, if you haven't seen part one, I will link this down below in the video description because there we covered basically already everything, but you guys wanted more. So now we came up with more relevant topics for you if you want to manifest any desire, if you want to live more fulfilled, apply Neville's teachings in your life, then this video will be um, very good for you. So one topic that we want to cover is, first of all, that the general topic of manifesting, right? It is such a buzzword, a big word. Uh, a lot of YouTube videos are being made nowadays about manifesting, manifest this, do this to manifest this. So we want to talk about right now, what is manifesting, right? What manifesting truly is, first of all. And for some of you, it might seem obvious. You're like, oh, manifesting, yeah, it's like making things happen, whatever. But me and Harris, we have like a deeper view on that. And Harris, when you hear this question, right, <clears throat> what manifesting truly is, what is coming to your mind when you hear that? Mm, a lot of things. And I remember when I started out, it was to get things, get things, get things, get things, get things. Yeah. And the biggest paradox is when it comes to what manifesting truly is, it isn't about to get things. It's about being the version of a person, whatever it might be. And that's how things come into your reality, into your life. So yes, of course, you can get things, you can get people, circumstances, whatever it is. But manifesting isn't about getting things. It's about being yeah. things. Let's call it being things. Yeah. And that is the true, the purest form of manifesting. By being suddenly your reality, people, circumstances start to reshift, remold, to actually propel you to get you there to your desired end. Yes. And that 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 was the biggest, I shouldn't say the biggest misunderstanding for me, but that was the part that I didn't really get when I started out my journey. Mm -hmm. I thought, let me do techniques, let me visualize to get things. But that was the wrong approach, wrong angle, and nothing happened. Why is it that? happening then when i reshifted to being staying on my own turf turning within feeling myself to be then all of a sudden coincidence here and there something happens some, someone says something something does something i'm being propelled i'm being moved yeah. through the bridge of incidents and also when it comes to manifesting when you start out just like i did from scratch zero i knew nothing from the beginning, it's a huge load of information. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, what is this? And when I heard Neville the first time, when he said, you're the open power, I took that to heart. Yeah, everyone is yourself pushed out. I was like, I had, okay. A lot of content being thrown out and you get confused. But after some time, you know, that information becomes some form of knowledge mm -hmm. you start to recognize things and ah, i heard that i heard that i understand then the third step is becomes kind of a applied knowledge then you start yes. to apply techniques turning within just feeling your i am feeling yourself then the fourth level is then it becomes like a experience knowledge then it's like this light bulb mm. 
I see yeah. how it correlates. Then the fifth step is actually full mastery. And you can literally turn within and literally be yourself. So, so why am I describing this kind of five-step process? Because that's how I view it, how I see it, and this kind of the journey that, that I've yes. done to take myself to a higher level. Because starting from nothing and ending up where I'm at today, I mean, it's a huge difference. And only I can go back and kind of see all those milestones, if you want to call them milestones, mm -hmm. and steps throughout the journey, things that propelled me. And there was a lot of trial and error. You understand something, but no, you have, I have actually misunderstood it. So it takes a lot of time. And it takes not just time, but actually it takes to turn within them to form your own understanding and approach to manifesting. Very and important. Yes, and I have my own approach when it comes to manifesting, and I know what it means to go to turn within. What is the I am? What it literally means to turn away from 3D and to literally feel myself to be whatever it is. I get that, I understand that, and when it comes to manifesting as I understand it now versus how I understood it then, <laughs> day and night. Yes. Day and night. Uh, how was your journey? Was it something similar? 100% mm, I could, like I nodded my head very often because I could uh, extremely much relate to this, to this journey you shared, right? It's first stumbling upon like these, these teachings. You hear all of these different voices, all of these different angles, like do this, apply this, this is relevant. No. This is not relevant. This is relevant. And you get messed up. But only when you then dive in for yourself and you, you know, you you start to dive deeper into what Neville meant and the concepts, you start to understand them. So that is first knowledge, like you beautifully explained. But then this is not enough. Like Neville said, you can know this law from A to Z. But if you don't test it for yourself, if you don't apply it for yourself, if you don't do the inner movement, shift your awareness to a new state, identify with a new state. You can't see new movement externally, right? You can't see any changes in your outer reality. So therefore, the best knowledge doesn't lead you anywhere. You need at some point when you got, okay, I know what to do right now. Then you need to apply it. And then you get wisdom, right? You get your own, your paradigm changes because you understand more of how life, consciousness, reality, and how all of this stuff works. So your journey was relatable uh, 100%. Before we, you know, see where the conversation leads us, I want to quickly come back to this to this topic of you know what manifesting is, and you explained your your journey and what helped you to deepen your understanding and those things. And you said one very important thing that I want to point out because you said in the beginning we try to approach this to get something right, so we do more techniques and then we Google or go on YouTube like best techniques or what are, what is the most powerful technique and we just do it do it do it more techniques and we're always in this I want to do this to get it. I want to do this to get it mode. Um, I want to point out for the audience right now, and probably you can relate to this, a big mistake with that, which you described because you said, then you focus more on the being it level, right? Instead of trying to get it, what can I do more? You ask, oh, how would I, how would it feel? What would it be like? How would I see the world if I am already this version of me that already has X, Y, and Z, that already is X, Y, and Z. And guys, you need to understand why Harris said this because if you are within and you have understood that your internal world is the cause of what you get reflected back, if within you're constantly in this, oh, I do more to get it soon, I do more to get it soon mode, then what can you expect from the mirror to reflect back to you, to show you, right? It will still show you that you don't have it yet. So only when you do what Harris said is that you within embody the you are it state, it is done, right? You are living in the wish fulfilled, like Neville said, you're dwelling in the end state, but then you're no longer trying to make something happen. It is done for you. And then the mirror of life can confirm it. So that's why Harris yeah, pointed it out that manifesting is not trying to get something, but embodying and dwelling in the state of having it, of being it right now. And that's the deepest yeah, shift you can do, being it. Instead of acting as you have it, no, it's like actually being it in consciousness, embodying it. So I just wanted to point this out because this was a point that I think maybe some people have overheard, but that's like very important. So is there anything you, you want to add or... <clears throat> yes, when it comes to the being part, and you know, that concept is kind of hard to 
rats when you start up. You do a lot of techniques and throughout doing these techniques, and all of a sudden you're supposed to be. And what is this being? How do I be when I want something? So there's mm. this mismatch, this paradox or distance. And whenever I remember when I was doing my journey, whenever I felt this distance, and I remember thinking for myself, no, this isn't how it's supposed to be. This should be easier than me feeling kind of pulled apart or where I'm separated from whatever. And this being is this inner notion of kind of expectancy. You take it for granted. Of course, this is possible. Not, no, no, not possible. This is true for me. This is my reality. Because every one of us, you, Niklas, me, myself, and everyone else who is watching you, is the centerpiece of their own reality. And you get to decide how your reality looks. I get to decide my own reality, and so does everyone else. So let me feel myself within how I'd like to reshift maybe a part of my reality or everything in it. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, some people might listen to us right now and they're like, okay, that, that all sounds good, right? That all sounds cool. I kind of, kind of get what you guys mean. I kind of get what Neville was talking about. Like you need to, you need to change yourself. And we also have this topic on mind that we later want to talk about, which is no one to change but self. But also, guys, you have to understand that everything we talk about only makes sense for you from the premise that imagining creates reality, right? What that means is that whatever you hold as true in your awareness or whatever you, what is a different you know, explanation, whether whatever you accept as true, whatever you are identified with, whatever is alive in your awareness is also you know, reflected back to you in your external world. So you need to understand that it's first within and then without. If you, and then these teachings start to make sense. If you still think that, oh, your external world is like separate from you and it's like um, yeah, just doing its own thing and you try to manipulate it, then you will always be like in this wall with the 3D world. But if you understand this connection that once you identify with something else, once you shift in the state of being sought after, like you um, also you know, played with Harris or having this, being this, being more wealthy, having X, Y, and Z, then that inner state has to be reflected. And then those teachings start to make sense. Then you know why you don't need to, or why you should not focus on doing more techniques to get it soon in the future. No, but to now be it within because the mirror can only confirm what you already have a life within yourself. So it all only makes sense from this premise that your internal world is reflected back out there. I think that's important to highlight for for, for, for the people. Yes. Well <laughs> said. Um, you, you, you also had this amazing topic idea that to, to touch base on, which I definitely don't want to forget in this call, which is source and manifesting and how, and how it ties together. And I think this is very relevant and important because in my opinion, most people, they still are very short-term um, focused. Like they just have a problem in their life. If it's in relationships, if it's in money, in health, boom, they go online. They want a quick solution, but they're not ready yet or they're not aware of how deep they can actually take it and how actually freeing those teachings are when you really go to the, yeah, to the, to, to, to the main teachings. And there's the manifesting aspect of things right? Uh, like, okay, I can shift within and get a goal externally reflect back to me. But then there's also awareness, right? I am consciousness, what Neville talked about. And what are your thoughts on that? Like, like how deep have you gone? Um, what would you recommend to someone? How does those two things tie together? I am and manifesting. What is on your mind when you hear that? So I'll start out with a theory on my own. Please. And I'll say that all of us that exist, we are nothing but a bunch of transmitters and receivers. We are all connected. So, so what does it mean that we are a lot of transmitters and receivers? And I mean, how many times haven't you been in a situation with someone where you are thinking something and then the person says it and vice versa? That in itself is a sign of that everything is connected. Even though we are all individualized, we live in different countries, different continents, but 
still we are all connected it all it all ties in everything is one and one is everything so when it comes to manifesting so if i have a part or a or a fraction of this grand i am so do you and so what so does everyone else so that said with let's call it frequency so if i have this frequency i can i can actually use it to my own benefit and literally turn within and make something alive make it true for myself and people will be pushed moved to act knowingly or unknowingly neville has said this many times through, throughout his lectures so so if you speak about the source that is the i am the, the portion small piece of the grand i am it's all connected and everyone has a piece of it within so if i activate my i am my inner self you will be moved just when we did the first part i knew <laughs> that that was not gonna be the only part and yeah here we yeah. are doing the second part i didn't know how much time it would take or what we would talk about doesn't matter but here we are i was moved to realize that desire you were moved to to conform but this is you know just one pos possibility or one situation and there are many other things that i have from my personal life where i've seen things move things that have come in how they have come in people saying and acting so so, so source and manifesting do tie in we all have a piece of source and we can use it to get things moving yeah totally agree what would you say is Oh, why would you say uh, is it so important for people to also like understand this this deeper part of like what you just explained like I am source that we're all connected is there is there something something coming to your mind when you hear this because I'm I'm, I'm sure you agree that most people they they overlook this right they just want the want the success they just want the manifestation there's nothing wrong with that by the way guys I mean of course we want to manifest our desires and you can do and there's no no problem on that but is there something coming to your mind? why you would say it is important for people to not forget this connectedness and this oneness aspect and I am in the awareness um, so that they can actually also utilize that knowing to manifest their goals easier? Would you say it's very important? Would you say you can skip it or it's mandatory? Like, what would you say? Well, of course, it's mandatory. There is the key, the golden key. Without it, you will not be able to, let's call it, activate it just for the sake of this conversation. Without the knowingness of this key, without the understanding, without the realization of this key, you will not be able to literally, you will not be able, you will not be able to go within and keep that inner world alive and stable throughout the passage of time. And if you are not, let's say, if let's call it convinced about your inner world and how, what it can do, mm -hmm. how, how are you going to go about when seemingly opposite things, you know, hit you in the 3D? Mm, interesting. Then you, yeah. then you lose it. It is happening. Why am I, why am I facing something completely different than I actually want? And I have experienced that for myself, and I have experienced you know, things throughout this last month, but it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm affected. I know what my true end is. I just go about life, and I don't complain, and I don't, I don't feel anxiety. I don't feel pressure. I don't think about it, you know, 24-7 when I'm spinning in my head. Yeah. I am not creating a story that doesn't serve me. Mm. Because when you are convinced inside, when you are aware of the I am, it makes it so easier to paint any picture in your head or tell any story that you would like. Yeah. And that is the key, the story that keeps playing inside. Yeah. I, I love how you, how you said this. And this is the perfect answer. And something for, for, for you guys also to, and I'm sure Harris, you would like agree on that, 
is that when you also go go deeper and you start to understand more of like how this reality works that you are in a sense like you know always expressing states so whatever you are identified with is like a, a cluster a bundle of beliefs identifications assumptions that are expressed through you and mirrored back through other people and just in your world but when you don't understand this awareness aspect when you forget that then it's very easy like harris also pointed out that you lose yourself in a state in assumptions in thoughts or in yeah just in a state and then you you're lost in that state so you you're very you, you don't know how to get out of it you you get the same experiences over and over again you feel stuck because in that state you can only experience this those experiences that are related to that state when you understand that you are awareness that you can let that state be but identify with a new state right make something new alive within you and leave that state and put your awareness on a new state and then this is expressed well then then that makes you fear freer and then you understand that you are not the state, if we go take it like really deep, that you are not the state, not the thoughts, not the identifications and assumptions, but that you are the awareness that can like shine your light on them in a sense, right? That can identify with them. I know this might sound a little bit woo-woo-ish for some of you guys, but you will understand. Um, you're free to, to, to change states, like Neville said, morning, noon, and night. You can be in new states, make new identifications alive within you, and they're then expressed in your world. And that is why source, like Harris said, is absolutely also in my opinion and and i am and awareness you need to understand this otherwise you try to solve problems in your current state so you have your experiences you might be triggered money relationship health and now you also how can i get this away how can i get this away instead of realizing that this is a state now playing out the state of illness the state of having the symptoms the state of being lonely whatever but you can place your awareness on what you want on that other existing state which is in existence because creation is finished another big topic but yeah it's it's it's, it's groundbreaking right it's like we could talk about one hour about that <laughs> um is there anything you 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 want to add to the like awareness thing and and how it ties into manifesting just anything else or <clears throat> is under your impression would you say we covered the main aspects what would you say yeah yeah we have Cover the main aspects, but I would like to add something when it comes to these practices, not call it practices. Uh, you cannot approach this or internalize this or digest this if you approach it with a scientific mind through logics. Yeah. Yeah. Neville has said it so many times throughout his lectures feel after him or fear after your I am. Yes. Yes, this yes. is a spiritual sensation. As soon as you turn on the mind, yeah, I've been there myself, so <laughs> that's why I'm saying it. So, and so that that is one of the, I shouldn't say the most important part, but it is a crucial part throughout the journey. Yeah, you know why this is really um cool why you bring exactly this topic up right now because this is the one that i <laughs> underlined right now to talk about next which i wanted to bring up yeah. as well which is not relying on logic and you just said it right if in my experience as well the, the the more you try to rely on logic and how can i solve this how can i get to the next step how can i what can i do to move forward with this the more again you stay in your own credit prison walls right you stay within the state in which the solution does not exist because that's a state where you have the problem right so no matter what you try to do, it will feel very exhaustive and long and you burn yourself out in a sense. But if you leave that state, you leave the problem as it is right now, but you place your awareness on what you want, aka you imagine, which will also make it practical for you guys. But if you imagine, for example, something that implies that you now are who you want to be, that you now have what you want to have, then you start to fill up your internal world with that mood, that feeling, that state of the solution where you are now who you want to be, where you have what you want to have. And that's outside of logic. Right, there is this quote, Harris. I think it's from the Bible, right? Where it's saying, um, let the weak men speak, I am strong. And that is for me the perfect non-logical uh statement, right? How can the weak men speak uh, uh, I'm strong? It doesn't make sense. They're weak. How can the poor men speak I'm wealthy? It, it does logically it doesn't make sense. But in awareness, that state of wealth and and being strong and whatever is still available, and we can dwell on it and see the world from any state. And that's the power B behind that so as you said logic will keep us very 
limited when it comes to manifesting, but many people have a problem with that. I think you notice that as well, right? In the community, you're also very active um, mm -hmm. and you see that people always try to solve problems and yeah, just stay stuck in a sense. Yeah, they try to solve problems and also kind of reverse engineer this mm -hmm. whole package yeah. and try to put it in a step-by-step -step process and kind of, you know, Excel sheets or PowerPoints what is this I am? How can I quantify this? Well, you don't quantify this. How do I label this? Well, you don't label it. Yeah. You know, from, from a logical standpoint. And why have I created this circumstance? What have I done wrong? Who cares what you've done? Assume mm -hmm. something else. This, this is the beauty of it. When you find yourself in an undesirable situation, I mean, don't. Don't look backwards. Do not try to understand what you what you imagined or someone else or what you did or didn't do. Do not reverse engineer. Just cut it off and assume something else. Neville never said, go back and deal with your past problems. Then you can start to manifest. No, mm -hmm. no, no. He just said, mm -hmm. let the dead bury the dead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, okay. mm. So, and do not reinfect yourself with circumstances just cut it and assume something else yeah so i mean i have come across you know people who said but oh you know i've been a, a traumatic relationship i should resolve things work with my inner child or shadow work i mean that's all fine but that is not required to yeah. be able to manifest if you feel that you should you know, see a therapist and deal with some things. I mean, that's cool. Mm -hmm. You can do that. That'll help you. But the main thing is choose something else. When yeah. I say choose, literally, literally take for granted this is true for me. Mm -hmm. If it if it is seemingly impossible, doesn't matter. Whatever you keep alive within yourself, whatever story that you keep playing in your head will play out. Yeah. This is a um, very nice transition. And I want to touch base on that. This touches base on a topic, which is, so people now have a desire, right? They have a desire for change. They might, like you said, they have this, this uncomfortable pause. They have right now, they don't like their circumstances. So they definitely feel right now a desire for change, no matter which life era it is, right? This is this is the beauty of this law, right? It, you can adopt it for, for, for any life era. It doesn't matter what, what it is because it's all, in a sense, like, like we talked about a state. So now, Harris, someone has a problem in their life and you said what most people do is so they look at this problem, they look in the 3D, how it's called out there, the 3D <laughs> world. <laughs> but, you know, it's, 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 it's correct. It's yeah. So they look yeah. at this and then they infect themselves again and they take the cue, oh, yeah, I, I don't have this. I'm I'm a I'm this person, right? I'm this type of person. People reflect this back to me, so I'm this type of person. Or I don't have this money here. Well, I'm I'm not financially stable, or I don't have the relationship around me right now, so I'm not with them. They really form their assumptions based on what is right now occurring. And mm -hmm. I loved how you said that this is that this is dangerous, in my opinion, right? This is a vicious cycle. So you look at what is, you look at the world, form your state out of that. You have forgotten that your world takes its cue from you. So then you have formed a new state, which in the reverberant delayed way gets then reflected back. So it just stay basically the same stuff. So that's why Harris pointed out in such a good way that let the 3D be the 3D right now. Let the circumstances be. You will here and there have some, some, some triggers. You will have some circumstances you don't like. That's not the problem. The question is with whether you had or what's your internal attitude? What's your, how are you internally aligned to that? Do you, you know, uh, do you go to sleep with all the triggers, with all the same states, or do you see what you don't like? But then, like Harry said, choose what you actually want, right? If you don't choose something new and you just react on what is, well, guess what? I mean, speaking facts, I mean, not much will change. It will be very slow and you will make this like a very, um, <clears throat> yeah, dense journey for you. <clears throat> but if you understand what Harry said is that let the facts be, you can have your problems. And this is, this is, you can deal with them in, in also all the human ways. But eventually, only when you choose a new state in yourself, you can finally solve that. Um, yeah. I think that's... Yeah, well, 
Yeah, as you said it, I mean, let it 3D be 3D. Yeah, yeah. Let it be how how awful it might be doesn't matter. But the thing is, who do you say I am? Yes. I am that I am. Yes. And that conviction and that integration of you know, within you, mm -hmm. that'll propel you. That in itself is more than sufficient. Yeah. But it, it takes, I'm not saying that you know, this is the first thing that, that'll yeah. literally settle in. It takes time to get there. But once it get there, ooh, yeah. it's priceless. I, this is good that you pointed this out because you, you you said it takes time, and I think most people, and that's why we also brought up brought up this topic of you know relying on logic and working ways out logically and being like, oh, but I have this problem right now. Can't just I can't just you know sit there and do nothing and just let the three D be the three D. That's also not what we're saying. Mm -hmm. But I think many people, like you said, Harris, they don't have developed this trust and knowingness that their internal world or their states that they identify themselves with or their provider, right, will lead to new circumstances. They still think that they need to do stuff like here all the time and have not understood that it actually is enough. And it's the only thing you can do to get new circumstances to fill up your awareness. You can also call it your inner reality, your imagination, your, your I amness, your consciousness, to fill that up with new states, to fill that up with the mood, the state, the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Um, but when you think that this is not enough, then you always try to make something happen. Yes, and I want to point out something else when I said, you know, it takes time. I'm not saying that manifestations take time. If you are trained to see the world and act from your know, 3D standpoint, yeah. and if you are indoctrinated and you'll be going through life in that sense, of course, it will be hard to just disengage overnight and to transition over to this internal reality or internal part of you that true takes time and i want to emphasize that true yeah yeah and that's 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 really a, a point also that some people you know get get triggered is that they see they they compare i mean it's a it's a general thing but they compare their step yeah. right now with someone's 100 uh, step so they listen to the conversation they see success and they think that they're doing something wrong but they're maybe just getting started so i think what you meant is also that it takes time to develop these new outlooks in life and to like integrate mm -hmm. these teachings and this is important that you guys please never compare yourself with anyone else it's super subjective i might have a slightly different approach how i you know manifest them than harris does harris has a different approach than another person does so develop your own style there is like a, f a basic framework covering it all but within that framework of like as within so without and shifting states you can you can play in your own rules in a sense still there's like just this overarching framework of like how manifesting works in my opinion. Um, but then mm -hmm. within that framework, we can develop our own style and in our own unique way, you know, progress and have understandings and our own realizations. And for some, it's might you know, in, in three months, they can accelerate quickly. Other people might take a year for that same journey. That's totally fine. That's it's just the uniqueness of everyone. Well, you mentioned, you know, different styles and, you know, you have in your approach, I have my also. What is your favorite technique? What yeah. is your go-to technique? I've Harris. developed one. I, I, I've developed one over, over the time of the testing every mm -hmm. Neville uh, a technique, right? And you guys mm -hmm. know probably the main Neville techniques imagining a scene, congratulation, I remember when, giving thanks for having received, um, eavesdropping technique, everything that Neville shared works, tested, applied, totally proven. But the one that I use lately, and I think that's just coming from more boldness that develops over time, is, and you will, um, you will connect with that, it's simply deciding. It's simply deciding mm -hmm. for a state because you have understood that desiring a state, and this is one of the most underrated Neville quotes, in my opinion, is desiring a state means having a state. So once you have the desire, you can only desire something where well, you can also experience the wish fulfilled of. So whatever desire is there present, there exists a, a mood of, okay, that is what it would feel like to have it. That is what it would feel like to be. It. So every desire <clears throat> means also that this state is possible. So when I have a new desire arising within me, usually it's, okay, I decide that now I'm this. I see the world immediately from this and feel into that and be that. So just shifting my consciousness, like without any, um, for any requirements, 
And the second, the second most thing that I like most is is still uh, imagining, hearing people confirming me things. That's yeah. just my go-to way. Let's talk about um, the the feeling of the wish fulfilled, and let's also talk about how to how to stay in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Like that whole topic of how yeah. to stay in the wish fulfilled. Because here is a general journey that I've that I've observed. Honestly, people come to Neville. People come to Law of Assumption to manifesting. They start trying to understand. Okay, I have to do some inner shifts and that will result in my world reflecting the manifestations back to me because my world ex without objectifies what I have a life within me. So then they do, they do, they start to shift in a new state and they want to start to identify with it, but then they get triggered. A doubt comes up, a fear comes up and yeah, a, a buried emotion comes to the emotion comes to the surface and that completely like, overwhelms them and they get like sucked back into the old state and they feel like nothing is working i'm back at square one so what would you say to this topic of, of, of maybe first of all like staying in the wish fulfilled or or getting back into it like what would you do how, how did you tackle that when, when when those things are coming up the challenges well, and <laughs> well we know i know and so do you and I believe many of the viewers know of this book from Neville called Feeling is the Secret. And you might ask yourself, what is this feeling I should be feeling? And how should I feel? And how often? Or And what's the intensity of it? So first of all, if we can address this feeling is the secret, what is this feeling? Neville, Neville said or spoke about this explosion of joy on the inside. He never lit, he never said that you should be feeling yourself over the moon where you're like there is like grand positive emotions you know streaming and flowing through you. No, no, those are that that is not that that's not feeling the secret. Yeah, you feeling the feeling that Neville was trying to explain in his book and throughout his teachings is just to feel something to be real. Yes, this is real for me, whatever it might be. That is the feeling. Mm -hmm. The feeling of acceptance as a truth. This is true for me. Yeah, This is my reality. Even if it isn't here yet, or now, I feel this to be true for me. And the loyalty to the unseen. That 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 is the feeling. And sure, when you start out this journey, you feel something to be real and you get triggered in 3D for whatever reasons because something opposite you know, hits you, yeah. comes up and there are these inner feelings and emotions or something from way back starts to resurface. Well, the thing is, it, it doesn't matter. It kind of pops up or if you are thrown off or if you are kind of disturbed for the moment because just... Neville has said it, you know, gently enter the state again. Yes. Because you are the, the deciding factor, not your emotions. So if you are triggered, sure, take it, you know, time out, maybe half a day, a day, three days, a week, two weeks, doesn't matter. But everything that kind of literally calms your nervous system, mm -hmm. then gently shift into the state. Yeah. Because you know, this should be easy and fun in a way. So there is no need to struggle to let me occupy the state where you're literally kind of battling your thoughts or emotions. And there, you know, you have this negative emotion like, no, 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 I, I don't <laughs> want to see them. I don't want to see them. But you saying no to these feelings, you know, that's literally you acknowledging them. Mm -hmm. Just let, let them be there. Let them. Let them stay, let them play around. Yeah. But do not engage with them. Do not wrestle with them. Do not to try to smother them or banish them or whatever. Yeah. And that is also part of the all. You decide. Well, the thing is, as long as you do not jump into this reality of negative emotions, as long as you do not accept this to be true for you, your manifestation is fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's that 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 that's all correct, and I think what you what you pointed out is that many people, when these things come up, so a negative thought, an emotion, a trigger, they I I have 
people telling me that they think that then their, their, their manifestation is gone or they, they mess it up, they can no longer get it or it ceased to exist, the desired state is for whatever, for whatever reason away. But I think that's, again, also this, 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 this thing that people have to understand. If creation is finished, which it is, right? but just to calm your rational mind, guys, if it is finished, then you can have an off day. Like Harry said, you can have a reaction, but that won't take away the desired state. So once you gave yourself some time to grieve or to react or to you know, let those things pass like a cloud, you can then maneuver back. But you have to maneuver back, right? If you, if you stay, in a sense, um, on the triggers and you keep reacting and you keep being sucked back in the old state and see the world from that again, well, that's your choice, like Harris said, right? You, you just dwelt on that old state again. But if you just see, while you do inner, inner movement or inner work, you will always have things coming up. I'm sure you will agree with that, Harris, right? I mean, no one that we came across is just saying, oh yeah, I shifted. I never have emotions coming up. I never have worries or doubts or triggers coming up. Mm -hmm. It's happening for, for, for a lot of people. That's not the problem because your desired end state, who you want to be, what you want to have, is always like I always say, it's like always sleeping within you. So you start to awake it, you start to occupy it. And it might be that three days later, you completely fall out of it. It completely feels very unnatural again, or you react to the opposite or whatever. But if you remember that, wait a second, that state is still available, right? I can, like you said, gently maneuver back in it and shift back in it. Well, that's perfect. You've just applied the law consciously. You have. You've been the operant power consciously. And I think so many people get too worried when, when an opposite happens. Like we said earlier, they lose themselves in that and they don't shift back. But the only thing it takes is self-awareness to recognize that you've now reacted a way that you probably wouldn't have reacted would you have your goal or you, you have doubts and fears coming up. That's not the problem. Acknowledge that, see that, understand that, okay, that's the old state maybe playing out a little bit. But then let me see the world again through my desired state. So you nurture it. But Neville said you have to um, yeah, dwell in it until it becomes habitual. Because the, 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 the wealthy person, they, they don't wake up in the firm. They don't wake up and, 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 and do techniques to be in a wealthy state. They are it already. It is habitual for them. That's the habitual state that they see life through. Same with any other state. Right? So once it becomes habitual, then it will automatically keep going on, on manifesting without you having to dwell on it again. Yes, I agree that, as you said, the habitual state and whatever you, whatever state, state you come back to. Yes. That is the reality that will be playing out. Might, you know, things might happen tomorrow or in a week or a month or three months, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But by occupying that state, you, you will produce that that reality even if it's good or bad doesn't matter yeah you directly or people aiding to that thing to come yes. about yes yes so if i mean how many how many so many times are like we have jinxed stuff this will go wrong this will go bad yes what mm -hmm. it went it it was like a disaster well jinx it the other way of yeah. course this yeah. will turn out good no jinx it keep on jinxing Jinxing, jinx it to your own benefit. Yeah. Jinx it to your own liking. Whatever it is, we have heard. You know, this thing is self fulfilling prophecy. Mm. Well, keep on jinxing. Keep on jinxing, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. you no, know, choose a state. Occupy a state. Three states. Fifty three states. Yeah. Three hundred states. Just go. Keep on occupying and positive jinxing, self fulfilling prophecy and. Well, let's just say you'll see shit moving now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I um, yeah. Wh while we spoke, I sometimes looked down on 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 the list of topics that we <laughs> came up with, and quite interestingly enough, we we actually talked about all of the things on on on, yeah. on the list. I, I yeah. still have this feeling within me, and probably you do as well, to yeah, like even give more value and even you know speak more to people listening to us right now uh, to really help them. <clears throat> get movement towards the desire, to see the desire mm -hmm. to sense, to to understand more of how they can live more fulfilled, more from within. So I just want to ask it openly in the room, Harris. Um, mm -hmm. Let's just imagine that, you know, younger versions of us or, or people that are, you know, starting their journey. Because I ask myself sometimes, you know, you watching this right now, how long are you in the Neville's journey? Is it a week? 
Are you watching this right now being uh, uh, six months in, three years in, five years in? So I always want to give, you know, value based on all different levels. So if you're like a starter, you know, some things we talked about might seem a little bit complicated. You should first of all familiarize yourself with the with the fundamentals, cover them in my program if you're interested in that. But you can also read a lot of Neville's books and watch my YouTube channel. But it's more like about the fundamentals. If you're longer in the journey, then more other things become relevant. You probably noticed that as well, right? That you're not really interested <clears throat> to learn, okay, how can I do the eavesdropping technique? Because it's like, you just know. If you know, you know, right? There are other things relevant. Like, how can I deepen my sense of awareness? How can I um, yeah, shift quicker or, or other things? So is there any topic coming to your mind right now for, for audience listening to this that you would like to to also touch base on and, t and talk about? I know in our first interview, we covered yeah. a lot. We also gave a lot of practical steps. I don't know if you remember, we even gave like a guide step-by-step -step how to mm -hmm. manifest a goal. So definitely watch this first part, guys. But is there something else, Harris, that you think um, would be nice to just chat about? For those who are just starting out, just remember, this should be easy and fun. And whenever you kind of get stuck, like you feel overwhelmed, take a step back. Because that's what I did. I had this you know, inner voice, this should be easy and this should be graspable. And I, it shouldn't feel like I'm literally climbing up to Mount Everest. So whenever yeah. you, when you when you are you feel like it's a steep hill, no, take take a step back. Mm. Something mm. Thump, something is off. Let me regroup. Let me see what I'm missing. Yeah. So you know that thing has always been with me throughout the journey. But you know when you are, let's say in a couple of months or or six months in or or a year in, well you you know about the techniques and. Congratulations and sad and <clears throat> I remember when then it becomes more like this inner knowing inner peace and the inner realization for me you know it took me actually solitude to turn within be by myself and having those let's call it downloads where I like yeah. I'm like whoa I see it I understand it that's how I got this theory of transmitters and receivers. We are all connected. Yes. It's through seclusion when you literally try to get it all together in a one single unit where you literally understand it, the whole deal package for, for myself. And that's my approach, my flair on it, not anyone else's. And, it, you know, literally trust yourself and give it time. Let things just flow along and let it come to you as it comes. Even if it's the slightest piece of information, you know, take it. Sometimes you'll be, you know, something you presented with a bigger piece. It might be through maybe Niklas or some other channel. It actually might be in, in real life where you see, yeah. see things unseemingly disconnected from manifest but it's, you literally connect the dots because you had to see it from another perspective where you go ah i see it mm -hmm. yeah i see it yeah so i would say you know trust trust and believe in oneself yeah that's a nice summary one thing to add is also to to trust maybe like as an as a comforter for you that harris me people sharing these teachings people manifest it you know shared success stories with these teachings um, that everyone goes th through these ups and downs and peaks and valleys and, you know, phases where you don't trust it, phases where you want to give up, phases where you think that's all nonsense, phases where you then are inspired again, wait a second, no, that must work. And so you dive in it again. Like the journey can be super individual and super, um, yeah, like we said, subjective to everyone, but stay with that journey. My advice, as, as Harry said, is like, Stay with it. Also, if like there are sometimes rough seas and you might feel a little bit stuck, eventually, in my opinion, and I'm sure you would agree, Harris, is that I have not discovered something deeper than than awareness and shifting states than, than, than those teachings and understanding them. I mean, there's always, you know, new stuff. There's always different uh, nuances to everything. But I mean, in general, this framework of how one can gain more control over their reality and manifest goals and live more peacefully as well, which is very important, I think, as well. For me, it's like Neville's teachings. For me, it's like the law of consciousness, the law of assumption. So 
stay with that, investigate, test, apply, get help, don't get help, trust yourself, right? We, I want you guys, and Harris said it as well, be self-reliant, right? Don't think that, oh, what I need, what this person says, I need to do exactly that, otherwise I will fail. No, get your own groove, like come up with your own way. The main principles, yes, they're, they're set in stone. It's an evergreen law. But as we said, do things in your own way um, and, and think for yourself, which I think many people unlearn these days. Uh, yeah, I, I would say that's a, that's a nice conclusion unless you want to add a final, a final thought to this amazing conversation. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. I could, I could go on for hours. Um, what do you think? Uh, your concluding thought would be, as you said it, you know, um, self, be self-reliant. And remember, this should be fun and easy. Whenever you are struggling, you know, take a step back and consider and try to understand why you're struggling at the moment. And live your life, you know, do things for yourself. Yeah. Even though you are mastering this law or you're learning about Neville and his teachings, well, don't forget to actually, you know, live your life. Do yeah. things, whatever it might be. Go to the gym, you see friends, go out and eat. Do trips, you know, if you like fishing, go fishing. <laughs> Throw your rocks in the river. <laughs> like, you know, do that. Whatever, whatever. You know, because you need to do something also in your life. Yeah. Not sure you can dive into the teachings, but there has to be balance. When you are balanced, it, it'll make this journey so much easier. I love that. I love that. Um, I want to give you guys some action steps. First thing is watch part one with me and Harris, because if I remember this correctly, Harris, we we also had a super, you know, deep dive, mm -hmm. uh, giving tips, giving, it was even more about your success stories and how you achieved certain things. And so if you listen to us right now, watch part one, again, it's linked in the video description. Uh, it's very crucial because we covered the, the basics of the Law of Assumption Neville's teaching. So you don't want to miss that. Um, check out the free masterclass first link in the description if you want to work with me and chat with Harris and be part of our community second link that's my program that's it internalize what we talked about and Harris um, and last step let us know in the comments how you like that if you even want part three and if you want part three then please guys share some topics with us because of course we can come up with some topic ideas but if you have more specific topics you want us to talk about you have specific questions problems let me know in the comments so that we can see, okay, this is what you need. And then we can, you know, come up with another conversation. Uh, Harris, it was amazing to have you again. Thanks for taking your time. Um, amazing conversation as always. Uh, all the best to you on your journey. And um, yeah, speak to you soon, man. Thanks for the nice video. Goodbye, guys. Talk to you soon. Nice. Bye.